The air around you is hiding a secret. It's called density altitude and it holds the power to make or break your flight. In this video, we'll discover three ways to calculate this insidious adversary. Buckle up, because we're about to elevate your aviation game. <laughs> so what is density altitude? According to the P-Hack, density altitude is the vertical distance above sea level in the standard atmosphere at which a given density is to be found. <sighs> wow, wait, that's not helpful at all. Fortunately, the P-Hack also provides a more useful description. Density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. In a past video, we explored three ways to calculate pressure altitude. If you need a refresher, I've put a link to the video in the description. Unlike pressure altitude, there isn't a way to set the altimeter to provide density altitude, but there are three different ways you can calculate it. Two of them will be readily available to you during your written test. Before we explore these, let's talk about why density altitude is so important. The P-Hack notes the pressure altitude is the basis for determining airplane performance. Well, why is that? Well, in order to create performance charts and tables, scientists, aviators, aircraft and rocket manufacturers needed a static, easily identifiable model of the atmosphere. With this in mind, they chose a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit, a pressure of 29.92 inches of mercury, and a lapse rate of 2 degrees Celsius or 3.5 degrees Fahrenheit to represent standard atmospheric conditions. As you've no doubt noticed, standard atmospheric conditions don't occur very often. So, pressure altitude is used to determine the effective height above sea level when the pressure does not equal the standard of 29.92 inches mercury. But, pressure is not the only factor that impacts the density of the air, and therefore aircraft performance. Two other factors are humidity and air temperature. The FAA does not generally consider humidity to be a factor when calculating performance because humidity impacts engine power more than aerodynamic efficiency. Even so, the FAA recommends adding 10% to computed takeoff distances and expecting reduced climb rates when humidity is high. High temperature, on the other hand, has a significant impact on air density and aerodynamic efficiency. Therefore, it is critical that pilots factor in non-standard temperatures when flight planning. And this is why density altitude is so critical. As mentioned earlier, there are three ways to determine density altitude. The density altitude formula, a calculator like the E6B, or a chart. <laughs> the density altitude formula looks like this. <laughs> In plain English, no pun intended, this equation states that density altitude is equal to pressure altitude plus 120 times the difference between the outside air temperature and the ISA temperature. You should already be familiar with pressure altitude and outside air temperature, but you may be wondering about ISA and the number 120. ISA stands for the International Standard Atmosphere, and ISA temperature is 15 degrees Celsius at sea level and decreases 2 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 feet above sea level. So at 1,000 feet MSL, ISA would be 13 degrees, 2,000 MSL it would be 11 degrees, and so on. The number 120 in the equation is the average increase in density altitude for each degree Celsius above standard temperature. So, if the OAT is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure altitude is 1167, what will the density altitude be? <laughs> First, we'll calculate the ISA temperature. Divide the pressure altitude by 1000 and multiply that by 2 to get the standard temperature change for that altitude. In this case, it would be 2.334 degrees Celsius. Subtracting 2.334 degrees from 15 degrees gives us the ISA temperature of 12.666 degrees. Next, subtract the ISA temperature from the outside air temperature. In our case, that would be 25 degrees minus 12.666 degrees, or 12.334 degrees. Multiplying that by 120 gives us 1,480.08 feet of increased altitude. Adding that to the pressure altitude of 1,167 feet gives us a density altitude of 2,647.08 feet. <laughs> Since performance charts are usually in even thousands of feet, for your check ride, let's round pessimistically to 3,000 feet. <laughs> Easy, right? <laughs> How about using an E6B calculator? To use the calculator, you still need to use pressure altitude and outside air temperature. We'll use the same values so that we can compare results. On this window of your E6B, line up the pressure altitude and your outside air temperature. Here you can see that we've lined up 25 degrees Celsius and approximately where 1,167 feet should be. Now, read the density altitude next to this arrow. It appears to be just under 3,000 feet. 
For the written test, we'll want to estimate as closely as we can. For the practical test, we'll round pessimistically to 3,000 feet. Finally, let's use the chart included in the private pilot written test supplement. Start by finding the outside air temperature along the bottom scale. Then draw a line straight up from the temperature. Where that temperature crosses the pressure altitude line, draw a horizontal line all the way across and read the density altitude on the scale on the left side of the chart. In our case, it appears to be between 2,500 and 3,000 feet, closer to 3,000. Once again, for the practical test, we can round to 3,000 feet. So, you can see that all three methods will give you very similar results. I have been asked by students why they don't have to use density altitude in their day-to-day -day flight planning. My answer is, is that they are using density altitude, they just aren't realizing it. Many newer performance charts look like this or this. They're built using pressure altitude, but they have the ability to adjust for non-standard temperature. And what's the definition of density altitude again? If this video was helpful, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Also, please check out the links in the description. If you're an Amazon shopper, using the links doesn't cost you anything extra, but by clicking any links, any purchases you make can provide a small commission that helps support the production of these videos. Any support is greatly appreciated. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time.